Hello, this is Bob Samuels from Tech Connector. You know, one of my favorite things to do is to learn and share about best practices. One of my commitments to our clients and our friends is to stay on top of the latest and greatest. And, uh, you know, AI is a big thing for me around uh, increasing the effectiveness of ABM efforts. And I am honored to bring with bring to you Sean Cook, who is has a wealth of knowledge about such tools. Um, I'd like this to be a, a participatory uh, podcast. So if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, something to add to the event, raise your hand and I'll bring you up on the stage and then bring you back down when, when, when you're done with the questions. So uh, John, if you, uh, um, it's a pleasure to reconnect. If you can uh, uh, give an introduction about yourself, about, about you know, your connection with ABM and AI, and uh, maybe a fun fact about about you that people wouldn't know uh, about, about you from LinkedIn. All right, there we go. Uh, so I'm Sean Cook. I am, uh, let's see, uh, interesting about me. My Well, my background with ABM is, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in the slides that I have, but, um, you know, I've been working with marketers for 18 of the 30 years that I've been working in business to business, uh, very closely with marketers. Um, of my 12,000 LinkedIn connections, 8,500 of them or so are marketers. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but I've been a, a sales leader. So I, I like to think of myself as a uh, marketing guy in the body of a sales guy. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably how I best describe myself. I have a passion for the whole thing. And, and because I've been doing it so long, uh, I see the matrix. <laughs> and so when I, AI came along for me, it was just, wow, <laughs> like uh, this is crazy. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about AI today. And I am, neat thing about me, not on my LinkedIn profile, although I talk about a lot of things on LinkedIn, I probably have talked about this too, uh, is that I'm a big lawn guy. Uh, I love hanging out in the lawn. I believe that nothing rides like a deer. Um, so, uh, that's me. I enjoy spending time in the yard and with my wife who I've been married to for 38 years. I have to say this, uh, because, uh, our 38th anniversary, much like you are celebrating your anniversary, Bob. Exactly. Right. Mine is, mine is tomorrow. I'm on vacation as we speak and yours is next week, huh? Mine is uh, on the 12th. I'm leaving on the 7th. Uh, but, uh, my wife and I will be celebrating our 38th wedding anniversary. Yeah. So there's We're only on 37. So you got me beat. Oh, just, you know, we were both babies. She robbed the crazy. <laughs> uh, but yes. So, so tell us about ABM and uh, AI. Oh, man. Um, so that ties to kind of my background, right? And that, um, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll advance to this, is that, you know, I've been working in B2B 18 years of this mostly in the B2B space and uh, a great deal of it in ABM. Um, I've worked at companies like uh, Vocus. We've acquired by Cision. That was more on the communication side of the marketing. Uh, then I uh, went to Eloqua, and that's where I believe ABM started to happen when marketing automation kind of came on the scenes. We were on our way to that, um, at least at greater scale. Um, Eloqua, of course, we were acquired by Oracle. Uh, I went to Track Maven, the competitive intelligence uh, platform they later acquired by Skyward. Um, and then I spent the next, oh, seven, eight years, 10 years in account-based marketing, particularly at uh, companies like Triblio. We were acquired by Foundry, of course, um, and Rollworks. Uh, so I've been in the space for a while. I've seen a lot of things, but I've also been close to the sales side of it, which is what I want to really get to today. So... Let me mute myself so that we can uh, continue. <laughs> Wonderful. I love I love your combination of sales and marketing, and and that's it's uh, super important about ABM. So, congratulations about that. All right. All right. Wait a minute. There we are. <laughs> All right. uh, so we're going to talk about AI powered tools that can transform 
ABM strategies. And I'm excited to do that with everyone today. And, you know, Bob is really big on us making sure that this is an interactive experience, right? Um, and uh, uh, that's important for me too. Um, um, oh, here's another little neat thing about me. <laughs> um, my wife and I, you know, one day when we retire, we plan to go to uh, probably Myrtle, Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina. And, and I'm an ordained minister. And so uh, I'm, I got this idea of a putt-putt golf course with a marriage theme, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and all the different holes are all related. And I'll actually have like an event area where I can actually marry people on the putt-putt golf course. I might even become the mayor of Myrtle after that. But anyway, um, I say that because um, I, I do, I'm an ordained minister. And so I, I do want the church to say amen. <laughs> In other words, participate uh, with amen, amen. conversation. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. a lot of it. <laughs> All right. Bob, you, say, you were saying something? Yeah, no, let's go on. So that, I want to I hear about some tools. All right, so we're going to oh, get saying to saying hallelujah. <laughs> All right, before we talk about it, we got to talk about account-based marketing because, you know, I, I, I normally when I when I come to these meetings, I, I bring the Lumascape or the landscape or the Martech landscape, a uh, new one coming out on Cinco de Mayo, and I usually show it and I talk about, oh my God, you know, uh, when I started with Eloqua, it was 150 logos. Um, it is now, uh, as of the last publishing in uh, May last year. It is 11,000. And then Martech uh, gave a preview of what it is now. And it's grown again. Uh, as of November, it was 13,000. And that's because of all of the AI tools that came out. So he had, a, he, you know, he did a, they did a, a release of just like, we can't wait till next May to tell you this because so many AI things have come out. Uh, here's an update. I don't know if, if, if you, if you subscribe to, uh, martechmap.com, um, and the whole Martech landscape, uh, the same day, all the technology comes out. There is the, the, uh, an, an award, the stackies that comes out as well, uh, for Martech. So that just tells you about how, how geeky I am about, uh, the marketing technology space. Um, but particularly as it relates to account-based marketing. Uh, so now you get to participate. <laughs> um, so if you are on your computer, and I'm sure you are, and you're not paying attention to us, but you do have a browser, um, you can go to menti.com. I'm going to show you all kinds of AI tools, starting with survey tools. <laughs> uh, so go to menti.com and put in... How do you, how do you spell that? M-E-N-T-I. Can you see my screen? Uh, if you go to M-E-N-T-I dot com and use that code 64370954, you're going to get to participate. Uh, I don't see that on it. So what is the code? 64370954. At the top of my screen, can you see that? Am I sharing my screen? Oh, there it is. Got it. Got it. Yep, I can. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Um, Beautiful. All right. Now, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna now go in and we're gonna do uh, this first survey, and it's asking you a question in a word cloud, so you get to kind of describe your experience with ABM. Because <laughs> I could talk about it. You already know I can talk. Like. <laughs> But I can talk about a lot of ABM stuff from so many years doing this, but I want to try as much as possible to talk about it uh, in context with kind of how you were living today. So um, three words that describe your ABM experience. Pipeline generation. Oh, that's so sad to hear. <laughs> uh, I say that because I'm... And I, I'm jokingly saying that because uh, one of the things that I that I'm concerned about, and it's not marketing's fault, <laughs> it's sales's fault, but one of the things I'm concerned about is ABM becoming demand generation 2.0, and I think that would be a bad thing. <laughs> and so, um, but you can use ABM for pipeline generation, yes, <laughs> um, and it's important that it is for pipeline generation. 
um, and not for demand generation. So now I take back my sadness. I'm happy about that because it is pipeline. It's high performance, strategic. Look at all of these words. Hard to personalize. Ooh, you're already jumping into uh, one of our other surveys. So right now we are um, essentially <laughs> um, using AI to a cool AI power tool, Minty, <clears throat> right? And you're gonna get to collaborate and I love all this participation. You're gonna get to see on screen everyone's answers. So this is a cool tool. <laughs> I, like We've already started into the tools. This is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, it, because it does all types of uh, things, as you can see, the word cloud here will use some other things, but I use it at lunch and learns and I use it in uh, webinar meetings uh, because one of the keys to ABM and the ability to, <sighs> I saw someone say it, I'm looking at my screen here. You're like, what is he pointing at? Uh, and the ability to personalize, someone who's talking, it comes from our ability to capture data. We're going to talk about data a little bit, just a little bit, um, and use that data to deeply segment, which takes me all the way back to my Eloqua days, <laughs> which is, you know, we had all these plays and conversations at Eloqua, and all of it was, you know, segmentation, deep segmentation is how you improve conversion how you improve relevance and that's how you improve conversion. Uh, and ABM, we're doing it for accounts and personas that we really care about. This is really good. Bob, I want to pause. I want, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here and I want <laughs> all the words there, but I want to know what's, what the words are behind, uh, you know, uh, from our team, maybe we can open it up. Um, if someone yeah. wants to. to I'm, I'm curious who said, who, uh, who mentioned underwhelming and, and why that is, and, and also hard to personalize and, and why. Yeah. And, you, and if and if you've got any thoughts, raise your hand or or put in a uh, a chat and jump in. If not, we can we can keep going. There's James. Okay, let me grab James. And uh, good, James. Let's see. Yeah, James Miller, super super marketer from uh, Merkel. How you doing, James? So what? What are your thoughts? Are you on mute, James? Um, sorry, I've got some construction here. Mine were underwhelming, hard to personalize um, because of the fact that those things are true. There's so much potential for account-based marketing that's being unrealized. And so um, that's what I'm trying to solve with our clients is how do we make it impactful, strategic? Uh, and you do that by personalization. We have all the tools all the people, all the content, we just can't get it done. Oh, I love that. I mean, I, and, and I think that is for, for a lot of people a reality. I, I'll, I'll share today a lot of tools that help to achieve that, but you would need tools to do it. AI can make you faster and better able to do it. Um, and I'll also share at the end of this, um, I have a very, very good friend uh, who she and I are partnering up uh, to to bring a maturity model to account-based marketing uh, and a progression model so that you can get in where you fed in. And, you know, because there's light, there's there's ABM that you can do. And we're going to talk about the different types of ABM uh, today, as a matter of fact. Um, and I'll hear from you what kind of ABM you're doing because there is different types of ABM. I, my, and I, I agree 100% that it is, under uh like like there's so much potential in it that we haven't tapped into it but i will say that just and i'm going to share some statistics with you today because i just love statistics mm -hmm. um but uh, but i will say that there are some people who are who are having a lot of success with it um and for a lot of organizations um it is their number one performing channel as a channel account-based marketing <laughs> um is their number one performing it just makes sense right because these are accounts that are getting, getting a personalized experience. And so they're buying and they're engaging more because um, they are lookalikes to companies that should buy from you. And I, and I got to talk about that for a minute. <laughs> Cause right. so, Sean, a, so, yeah. Sean, you're going to address, you're going to address those two things about the enrollment and the, and the personalization. 
Sounds like yes, that. absolutely. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, so I appreciate your answers. Thank you so much. Minty. Yeah, thanks, James. You, you look good, by the way. <laughs> Minty, All you right. have to have to. OK, so I'll, I'll just say this really quickly. This ability to survey, again, is how we're we're going to have to <laughs> I'm just gonna say you got to find ways to measure customer reactions and not just sales and marketing actions like if if abm is to succeed if sales is to succeed we have to cuz there's too much gut driven <laughs> behavior and we're living in a digital world now where like there almost every sales interaction is digital uh gardner says 80% of B2B buying uh, by next year, 2025, of the buying experience is going to be happening digitally. Um, I'm sorry to say Gartner's kind of behind the ball on that one. I think it's probably already at 80%. And I, next year is probably going to be, because AI speed is speeding everything up. And I just think that that's where your buyers are. Um, and when they interact with you, whether it's through your website, whether it's through text, or whether it's through some type of captive experience, We've got to find a way to start trying to get their reactions and not just their actions. I'm going to get off my soapbox on that, but Beautiful. I think. And then, uh, yeah, Mark uh, Mark Ogney's got a question, so I'm going to I'm going to jump him up here. Yeah. All right, here he comes. We got a lot to cover. We're going to get yeah. there though. Yeah. I promise I'll yeah. speed up. <laughs> All right, Mark. Question, thought? Uh, you're on mute, sorry. Sean, I was gonna say that, uh, see my buddy James on there, it means I gotta step up too here. So um, <laughs> great. I, I, I really agree with a lot of the things that you're saying, in particular around segmentation. Um, I was the one that put in research-driven ABM and was it high performance? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been doing this primary research since 2015. And yeah. one of the hurdles that we do is we try to look at it from um, measurable high performance and high performance defined as at least 25% of marketing attributed revenue coming from ABM. Yeah. And categorically, it's been, you know, the first year is like 18% of ABM programs and more recently about 25, 26%. And some of the things that people get wrong are very fundamental, um, you know, segmentation, you know, like they, they approach it with a single list. I, I guess I was just raising yeah. my hand to echo, I think, what James is saying, which it's not a silver bullet, but then also to echo a point you were making around segmentation and, and strategy being the drivers. Absolutely. I mean, you just think about it this way. As a, as, you know, no one would argue with a personalized experience outperforming uh, a less personalized experience, right? Our generics experience. Yeah. Um, no one would argue with that, right? Um, so our, our ability to segment is critical, but I think it it's also because it's funny, I'm, I'm working with a client now, right, <laughs> right now, who has a great product um, in a competitive space in MarTech. Mm. Um, and they are having the most difficult time differentiating themselves in yeah. this crowded space uh people think that there's something that they're not uh they're still their messaging is still like and they have product market fit they have customers but uh, they are struggling to break through the noise beyond you know that initial splash of you know hey bye everybody i got a new tool now they're having to build a pipeline you know with people who are really at the very beginning of their uh evaluation or even consideration stages and account-based marketing to me is a way to make sales predictable, repeatable. And here's what I'll say, because um, I, I agree with you that it's not a silver bullet. And maybe that's why, and I have some stats here that only, uh, let's see, it, it only represents 29 at the high 29% of a company's overall marketing spend uh, is ABM. Um, now, I argue that it should be higher, but the reason it's not is because of sales. And I'll talk about that. <laughs> we're we're going to get to that. Yeah. Um, so, so, so this is great. I, I appreciate everyone's response. I do want to, 
I want to yeah, we got a lot to cover about ABM just a Thank little you. bit more because I, I want to get to the tools. There are some really cool tools out Thanks, here. Guys. Um and I want to get to those. I want you to 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 see what they are. So uh anyway, Minty being one of them. Uh and uh now I'm gonna I'm gonna take on to uh to our to our next thing. So F ABM has gone through uh, an evolution. I won't bore you with the details. I've seen it from the very beginning. When we are, Triblio, you know, Triblio was kind of probably at the very cutting edge of that, Andre Yee, and, and we, uh, people were still thinking it was just, you know, accounts and ads. <laughs> uh, so it, it be, it's become a lot more uh, since then. Um, okay, somebody mentioned challenges. And so I do want to make sure that we at least hear from you uh, in the same Minty, so you're back at that same page. Yeah. Uh, rank the aspects of ABM that you find most challenging from lead from most to least. Uh, so, big, so big, yeah, yeah. So most would be your first, and then down from there. Um, so the just, smaller the number is the most. Yes, the the the, the smaller so number. I see ranking. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Most challenging. Yes. Uh, Minty.com. M-E-T-N-I dot com. And then if you put that code in, we should see your responses. And it will, it used to, tell me. And I'll put the link here. Maybe I got the. I'll put the link here. How about that? Uh, can wait, wait. In the chat, Bob. Uh, I got two here. Hold on a second. Or the Q and A chat. All right, here we go. I just sent this, Bob. I think you have to share it with the group. Okay, you can, you, let's see. It's gonna get fun, folks. Stay with me. Oh, I see, okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got sales and marketing alignment right now is number one with two voters in, I believe. Anybody else voting? Uh-oh. Okay, here we go. Isn't this cool? <laughs> like, <laughs> think about the kind of reactions that you want to get in a webinar. And it's kind of like, and today being the first day of baseball season, I can talk about this. You know, you go to the baseball game and they put it up on the big ball, you know, screen and Everybody's guessing which number it's under the, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, but it's a participatory thing, right? And I think that it allows you to gain insight into your buyer so that you can start to deeply segment, right? Now, now, if, if, if you were my buyer, per se, I know that these are the things that you care about. And now the, my targeting, my ads, my emails... Uh, my social media touches, uh, my conversations with salespeople and SDRs now ties to the things that you most care about, right? Um, I'm going to big spoiler alert on the sales piece because I just, I think that's what's missing. We need an account-based sales approach. Account-based marketing is doing what it's supposed to do. I, I promise you, like it's not as gr good as it could be. It can be better, but it's because marketers are being forced <laughs> to turn account-based marketing into lead gen. Uh, and that's because sales isn't converting it at, at the way that they should. And I'll, I'll just leave it there. We're gonna talk more about it though. All right, so I think, are we all in? Is this it? Everyone's voted? Eight voters have told us, oh, look, you called it out early. Uh, uh oh, oh, I, oh, did something move? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like, it's real time. It's like, whoa, <laughs> did it happen? <laughs> um, all right, I think we're there. All right. So measurements up there. Measurement is up there. 
<laughs> right? And here's the thing, because um, Morgan is looking at, I, I, we just heard him, like 29, 25% associated with marketing or attribution, influence. <laughs> um, shout out to Octane 11. I just got to tell you, if you're looking, trying to find a way to measure uh, uh, um, a multi-channel <laughs> uh, return on investment, tell Dan and Rosenberg I sent you and uh, you hook up with him. He's got some amazing tools there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So uh, personalization, we're going to talk about all these today. Identifying the right accounts, right? Now, we're going to talk about AI now because this is this is where we can we can really get into the impact of AI. The impact of AI means that it's going to get easier to do all of these things, except this one, <laughs> <laughs> except this one. And this is the one that's most important. Is because I I have a, a, a screen I'll show you in, in a little bit. This number is still blowing my mind. It was even blowing my mind as I was walking in here. Uh, and you can probably look on yourself and find uh, there are so many stats around ABM. I mean, more marketers are doing it. I'm not the only one. I mean, every, you know, Forrester, everyone's this. In 2024, in fact, spending more than 2023 than they did on account-based programs. So it's a, I don't know, $2.7 billion <laughs> thing. So um, th there's a lot of opportunity uh, in account-based marketing. And AI is going to make it even better, right? Uh, we're talking about accuracy. <laughs> that was the first one, right? It was it was <clears throat> improved targeting, predict future buying behaviors. Like the models are only getting smarter. <laughs> um, creating content, nurturing, personalization, <laughs> uh, all kinds of sales intelligence. There's, there's a whole lot of things that AI can help you do. Here's one thing I will say, because I don't know, and I had a, a, a survey question uh, that um, I, I didn't get a chance to create because um, I did want to find out everyone's experience with AI so far in terms of, and maybe we'll just open up the room and people can tell us if they you know, have experience uh, with AI. Yeah. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll talk about just like, here's the impact of it. And guess, and there is a benefit. There's a strong benefit uh, to this. And that is that we should, <laughs> I'm going to say this again, should mm -hmm. uh, see higher conversion rates uh, and a reduction of waste. And I think I think even over the years, going back to marketing automation at Eloqua, I think marketing waste has gone down, right? Like, I think we're more targeted than we've ever been before. And I think we have the ability to reach better than we've ever had before. Um, I don't think we're seeing shorter sales cycles and I got evidence of that, but it's not marketing's fault. It's not marketing's fault. Um, it's, 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 and we're making better marketing marketers. And I can say this as a sales leader are making much better data driven decisions about where they spend their time and money than, than sales is <laughs> like, and that's hundred percent true. Sales will get better though, because now we have revenue uh, intelligence uh, and we have conversation intelligence. And, and if we can bring these things together, I think that we can really make ABM work. So it's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> but I did want to just say, like, there is there's some strong benefits. And that if you're not doing anything with AI, maybe you will. <laughs> By the time we get finished talking about the things that we do, like uh, that we're going to talk about today. If you're looking for ways to improve efficiency, if you're looking for personalization, if you're looking for predictive analytics and improved ROI, you're in the right place. So, and I think just that that might be the exact rank, and I didn't plan this, <laughs> of your answers, <laughs> um, with the exception of sales and marketing alignment, which on my chart ended up as number two now, because uh, it's updated again. I've gone on for that graph, but it has updated just real time for you. It's like CNN, man. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm updating you on that. <laughs> um, but it has it has gone up. Okay, so let's let's talk about it. Uh, you know, funny enough, scaling uh, ABM is number six of uh, nine uh, on or of eight on the rankings there. Um, so that is a very interesting thing, and I'm going to ask you a question about it in a second. But now let's get to let's get to the meat of it because I want to show some tools. So 
I live on the sales side of the world. There have been all kinds of studies that have just recently come out <laughs> around sales performance in 2023 and going so far into 2024. Um, and this has been a trend actually for a little while. Uh, the percentage of sales reps that are making their quotas are just way down. <laughs> this is my conundrum slide here, right? Like these, this is these are true statistics from Gardner, from Forrester, from marketing profs. Um, I should have put the references here, but like these are these are true statistics from them in terms of what ABM is doing for marketers. And I gotta say, I can't argue with it because I've I've been I I actually have been in practice. I've been going to Itzma. I've I, I've been you know with Rollworks and with Triblio. And marketers are reporting a lot of success with their account-based efforts. It still only represents 29% of their budget. Now that's grown, by the way, uh, from 2021, I think it was, you know, 17, mm -hmm. something like that. So we're, we're up, way up uh, on, on the percentage of the budgets, but it's the cost of sales is hurting us. And we're seeing these layoffs, especially in tech, uh, and, and a lot of it has to do with sales isn't, they're not bringing it home, right? Like marketing says, and even sales says to market, these are the accounts that we want to sell to. Or, and sales says to marketing, well, or marketing says sales, these are the accounts that look like, feel like, smell like, taste like, demographic, technographic, industry wise, right? They are the companies that look like our, our, our customers. So we market to them, personalized, orchestrated, I mean, all campaigns. And this is what the result has been. But they get over to sales and this is what we're seeing. This is the state of uh, B2B sales 2024. There's a company called Epsta, another really fancy revenue uh, uh, um, intelligence platform that I just recently came across and it is super amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm already plugging them and I haven't used it, but I just, I see what it does and I'm like, whoa. Um, but look at this. The win rates decline 18%. Down 27%. Average sales cycles are 16% longer. I know I'm pretty sure the choir. I know you know this, <laughs> right? Like average deal vials are down 21%. 69% of B2B sales reps missed their quotas last year, <laughs> right? 15% of sales teams are, 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 are like achieving 80% <laughs> of the quota, right? So we've seen a, lo a lot of problems here and this is why ABM is so important. And now we're gonna get to the tools here because I, I want you to see, I just wanna know your thoughts though, really quickly, <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, why do you think this gap exists? Three words. I think any marketer jumps at the opportunity to talk about salespeople. <laughs> Um, but but I would love to hear um, from you. Like, what, why why do you think uh, in Minty, by the way, why do you think this is happening? And then we're gonna fly right into some tools. But I'd love to just get your thoughts. Um, is it is it uh, allowing you to put your answers in? And while people are, are filling in their answers, I'm going to invite uh, Michael Phelan to jump in. Um, he's he's done some some work, too, on and he's gotten some, some similar numbers as you as far as, you know, the number of sales reps are meeting their quota and and has some insights of why that's happening. So um, that, that's, he's going to be able to provide some interesting input, I would think. Michael. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, the great, uh, great discussion, Sean. You know, a, cu a couple of things um, that I've been following. You know, if you look over the last five years, the uh, MQL, SQL conversion to meetings um, has continuously gone down. So it's gone down by about 50%. So, so mm. you'll argue that, you know, marketing is creating more leads. Um, but, you know, when you when you have half the level of conversion to meetings, um, you know, they're peddling uphill. Um, and so I don't think that marketing is focused on what's driving a meeting. 
Um, I don't think marketing understands why prospects take meetings. And I don't think marketing is delivering a programmatic approach to help reps ramp meetings. So, so you're having a huge collapse in the middle of the funnel and the discovery mm -hmm. meetings um, are down about 30%. I just spoke to a full funnel marketer just the other day and he described himself as from lead to sale. And I said, well, what's your MQL to sales meeting conversion? No idea. Do you have more discovery meetings this year and this quarter than last year? No idea. How mm -hmm. is your bonus set up? It's based on MQLs. So, so it, despite the rhetoric of marketers, they have not solved the problem. It's got worse. And sales is kind of left holding the ball. A net net, there's going to be a lot of sales layoffs. But irrespective of that, there has to be ownership of, you know, we need to drive interactions, not downloads. We need to drive meetings, not views. Um, mm -hmm. And so what do you think about that? I, I think it's a catastrophic failure by both sales and marketing leadership. I, I think I think that um, we have gotten into this traditional relationship and that we sh we we need to change not because you know you're not giving me enough meetings or the meetings aren't qualified or the you know it's because buyers buyers have changed and Gardner has even talked about like you know they're only spending 17% of their time with suppliers and if they're looking at three different solutions that goes down to like 6%, you're like 66% 6 of their time. And all the st studies say they want to spend less time with salespeople, but like, like, and as they get younger, these Gen yeah, Z, I, I agree, they, you know, that they they're going to want to spend less. Yeah. But so, so here's the reason I say that is because I don't think we should be trying to sell these accounts. This is my whole premise on account-based marketing. And I'll just say it. If this account, well, you got a, you got an ICP that you have nailed. You're like, I can look at my customer base. Now in the startup world, it may be different, but in an existing company, you say, we got a hundred customers, 200 customers, right? And you say, this is what a good customer looks like for us, technologically, industry, persona, uh, revenue size, all these things. And you have this ICP and you know the person, you know what they care about. Like, this is somebody who should be buying from you. You look at the account, you say, this, is, this should be a customer. And that's what account-based marketing is to me. Like I, I have very high value accounts that I want to convert at a high rate. I'm going to give them a very personalized experience. Then it sh shouldn't be about MQLs. It should be about how many of those accounts will come to a conversation, engage with us and agree to evaluate us because you look like an account that smells like, tastes like, feels like an account that should be buying from us. We don't want to sell you. What we'd much rather do is facilitate a buying process where sales and marketing are intertwined, a, a buyer journey that leads to us proving that we just time equal trust. Because now we're in a, in a place where we only get this much time. How do we accelerate trust? And if yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I agree. Right. You know, there when a lot of the companies that I work with, um, their solutions are unknown. They're innovative. They don't have enough money to boil the ocean from a marketing perspective. Their mm -hmm. only real chance of selling is by getting a buyer into a discussion so that they can have a discussion about what they offer and that the buyer will actually consider it. So a lot of this kind of nurturing thing, it works well if, if someone has a predetermined solution that they want and they're going through a process and all that. It doesn't mm -hmm. work well. But my, my point is there are ways of getting meetings um, that marketing are completely blind to and doing nothing about. So I'll give you one good example. Um, if you reach a buyer and talk to them about their best in class peers or competitors and show them that there's a performance gap on then solving a problem and you can bring insights to them versus where they're at versus their competitor and how to bridge that gap, you will get a meeting every single time. So marketing is doing nothing to drive those kinds of conversations. And mm. there's about 20 ways of, of adding value to buyers and marketers are completely blind to that. So so my point How is- How do you think that is though? Do you think it is because they're just trying to meet the lead number? 
Like, is it like, like they're just chasing a lead number or? Um... There's a couple of reasons why. One is they've never taken accountability for creating programs that ramp discovery meetings with prospects. And, uh, and that's one. They don't. If you ask a CMO, how did the sales team get their last hundred prospect meetings? The answer would be no idea. Um, and even a sales leader sometimes doesn't know that. So if you don't know how your team is getting meetings, how are you going to ramp to a thousand meetings? So I, I think it's a lack of focus on the right metric, which is net new prospect meetings and net new discovery meetings. It's a lack of accountability to the right metric. And it's dashboards all over the place, but missing the most important thing, which is in ABM, how many meetings did we have this week <laughs> with our mm -hmm. ABMs? And a lot of times they don't ask that question. How many net new customer meetings did we have this week? Uh, and what's our goal? So it's 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 a combination of sales and marketing alignment, lack of alignment to the right metric. And it's a combination mm -hmm. of not understanding how you ramp discovery meetings with customers and prospects. I, I like the detail around the, the the that in terms of like the number of discovery meetings with targeted, you know, with a with this name list mm -hmm. and what we're doing. Because I that that to me is what ABM should be about is which is bringing together more collaboration. I think a lot of it happens because we haven't defined I'm gonna the journey. <laughs> like I, I I think that, you know, it's like Okay, you want me to bring them to a discovery meeting? Marketing's thinking, okay, yeah, but then what? Uh, so how do we how do we bring them to a place? And I think that a lot of that, these are some really great feedback. I, I think that a lot of that is because we haven't sat down and said, what does this look like? I'm gonna jump back in. I, I love the. I let love let the, me end, let me end with one little <laughs> anecdote um, very quickly. But um, one of one of my clients is a CEO, and last Monday he called everybody in he put up his abm accounts and he put up his customer accounts that he's focused on customer prospects and he said how many meetings do we have um with these people this week and the answer was none and he says on friday i'm going to ask the same question and on monday and friday every single week i'm going to ask that same question and the sales hmm. guy said well what about my pipeline he goes i'm not interested in anybody that's not on this list I like that. Kill them all. Tell them they're off the pipeline. And the sales yeah. guy went wild. And marketing goes, yeah, but look at all our visits to the website. He goes, how many meetings do we have with these two lists? So it has to be top-down driven, and the issue is it's not. So I leave it there because I know you got more to cover. No, that's uh, that is fantastic. Um, and I and I think that this this goes to to an experience uh, that I've had. But I want to I want to. I want to move to uh, a couple of things. Uh, I'm really interested. There are all kinds of types of ABM, right? So I want to make sure that I speak to what's important to you guys for, for you know, with, in conjunction with the tools we're going to now talk about after this, <laughs> after this brief message from Minty. <laughs> um, <laughs> in terms of you, you just telling us, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, what kind of ABM are you doing right now? Is it is it one to few? Uh, is it is it one to one? Is it one to many? Um, really curious to hear. Uh, from the group on that, because that may play into uh, what else we cover here today. And I think we're going to have another. We're going to have a follow up podcast to get to get to some of the. Yeah, tools, I wanna, because we're not going to have dive time. deep on a few, <laughs> right? Um, I want to dive deep on a few of these um, later at a later time. So, uh, particularly some of the AI technology for video, because I think that part of getting meetings uh, is a lot to do with you know, how we get to these audiences and video is proving to be uh, extremely successful in that. All right. One, one, one of many. Uh oh, programmatic. Most people are leaning towards programmatic. No one's doing uh, executive briefings and specialized content just for a single client uh, on the strategic side. All right, 20%, okay. That's where most companies start, right? Um, high cost, but also a high return on investment uh, for that strategic. Um, but that's the one we want to scale. I mean, like if you could use AI to scale anything, it would be <laughs> number one, right? Because those are bigger deals. Um, and if you could if you could scale it there, but the cost is the issue. So how do you bring on the cost of of strategic to more of a light uh and get the same results 
right? And really specialized uh, attention. Um, all right. And the voters have spoken. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. This is good. That is kind of right in between. So we'll talk a little bit more about this than that. Although the things that we talk about this will apply uh, to that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into it, folks. We've been waiting for this all this time. All right. Here we go. I have done a, a deep dive into a lot of different tools on ABM. I will say right now, I'm, uh, AI tools, AI powered tools uh, for ABM. These are just some of my favorites. I have not used them all, but I have studied them all because I'm a nerd. Um, and I am big on things that uh, help me <laughs> to to make my uh, my process repeatable and predictable. Um, so. Uh, it, there, here are a few. You will get this slide deck after, so so it'll have links so you can go and you can look at some. I'm starting with this one here, though, because if ABM is to be successful, um, oh, they, oh, there's a good one, Mark. Uh, Simplexity.ai. I'm, I'm going to need you to tell me what that does, because I'm is that a is that a persona for for building personas? <laughs> um, this these are for for creating personas. I just want to say, I'm just, like, go ahead. I go I ahead, please. For, I, ABM, I don't want to for ABM to be effective, this this is probably one of the most important things. Not just the accounts that look like accounts. It's the people, mm. right? It's the person. Every single person on that buying team. I now have to be able to speak directly to them for my ABM campaigns to be really effective. These are some tools that help. I'm sorry, Mark, go ahead. By the way, at 1000% with what you just said there. So I mentioned segmentation earlier and part yeah. of the work that we do is looking at, you know, deciphering total addressable market from ICP. The difference being that some people that could rationalize giving you money actually be, end up being un, unprofitable. And so mm -hmm. pair that away, look at customer portfolio analysis. And then it's not, there's no such thing as an ABM list. If you're thinking of a list, a list, that's probably the lowest performing idea that you can come up with. Wow. That there's really lists and then segments within lists. And the objective, something that you mentioned earlier, you know, you you inferred the way I think of it is there are truisms that existed before ABM. If you can properly uh, segment and identify an audience identify their need and then deliver content to that need across multiple channels consistently, you will outperform by like three X that existed, Absolutely. you know, in the seventies, eighties, nineties, like <laughs> so way true. before ABM. Yes. And, and yes. it's still true. They, it, you're doing a great job. You're, you're an excellent speaker, by the way. Oh, I appreciate that. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> um, I thought I was going to be on the radio and, you know, I went to broadcasting school. <laughs> <laughs> and um that didn't work out i still do voiceovers though so if you're ever looking for a, a voice i'm <laughs> to you know uh in in the old days i'll, I'll age myself you know when you had in-house telephone systems i was the voice of every company i ever went to like i was the guy when you called in i was like thanks for calling hanley wood uh it, it was me <laughs> um so 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 um personas though we gotta we gotta get down to these personas Here's this one of these tools here. I absolutely love, um, uh, which is which is Crystal. It, it gives you insights into their LinkedIn profile and it helps you actually know like what does this ca person care about? How do they want to be spoken to? Um, uh, I think that this is this is ex excellent. And here's where I'll give you a twist. And uh, there's a young lady named Moni. She's a marketer on LinkedIn, Okalidi, I think is how you spell her last name. Uh, she just put up something just recently about not just having a buyer persona, but having a protagonist persona. And it was the whole idea of speaking to the emotional aspects of that person's role in terms of what they fear the most and what they're, you know, uh, and, and beyond, you know, the kind of what's keeping you up at night, like, but internal factors, uh, things like uh, um, imposter syndrome and things like that, right? Like anticipating things like that. So, and that's the great thing about AI. I can take something <laughs> and I can say, take this piece of content that is written this way and turn it into something that is in the uh, mindset of 
the protagonist profile that I've just created. And so I can take content now and flip it to situational segmentation. That's where we have to get to, right? Like situational segmentation now is, I can, every, I, I hope everyone does this. I'm, I'm positive that you do, but um, I have a job changers. That's a, that's a green evergreen campaign It's always on because I know that if someone changes jobs as a CMO, VP of marketing, uh, as a head of sales, they're in that mode where the change, they're, they're bringing change and so they may be less resistant to change. Um, so if I, I segment, again, everything you said there around, you know, all these segments, but down to now situational, this just happened, right? Or within the last three months, they've moved into that job. Think about what they go through in the first 90 days, they probably gave them a 30, 60, 90, 180 day plan and, so now I'm like trying to align my core competency, strengths and solutions to what I know they are situationally segmented to do, right? Uh, to accomplish their objectives. So, I, I, and the person who hired that person is under pressure too. <laughs> so there may be a different message for that person from a segmentation perspective. This is what Crystal Nose gives you the ability to do, especially with the AI driven uh, uh, things there. So. That's that's uh, one of my favorites. Um, this is, uh, SparkToro is more um, commonalities of an audience, kind of the things that they're doing right now. Um, Affinio is is probably more social media related, like in terms of like forming groups, looking at their interests. But then again, if this person is a part of that group, right, how do I speak to that person? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I'm gonna quickly move on. SEO, right, and I don't know if you guys are doing SEO, uh, but you should be, <laughs> all right. Uh, SEO is, 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 you know, it, it's how we, we stay top of mind. Uh, you know, th this is saying 68%. I want to say somewhere in 93% of B2B, uh, buyers start with some type of search online, <laughs> right? So, uh, we, we need to, to get in front of them. Video is going to be a big important, important part of that. And guess what guys, guess what we didn't know. There are some amazing solutions, AI solutions for SEO optimization. <laughs> like, I mean, amazing. I, I'll market muse. I, I have them in several places in this, a uh, couple places. I've moved them from one. Uh, it, it, they are, it's amazing what it does. Uh, it researches, analyzes your content. It compares it to your competitors. It finds the gaps. Um, then helps you to again write for SEO. <laughs> like, what are what are my competitors saying? They're, if they're listed in SEO, they're they're highly ranked or whatever. Uh, what are they saying? How can I? You know, you've probably asked that question, <laughs> but then like, I have absolutely no time <laughs> to go figure that out. Well, now AI will do it for you. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Like, uh, if you're not using AI, I don't know. You know, again, I meant to ask that question. I really wanted to see like kind of what everybody's experience has been with uh, with AI, but. Uh, this 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 is this is really important. If you ever want to ask, if you want to figure out how AI, how powerful it is, if you take your to do list, just everything on your to do list for the day, screenshot it, put it into Chat GPT, and ask Chat GPT, how can AI help me with this? Get ready for your you know mind blown emo emoji. It's going to blow your mind. <laughs> um, so it can help with a lot of things, but it can absolutely help with SEO. Um, and so, um, and Surfer is probably another one. I don't know if anybody's using, anybody using any of the things that uh, I've uh, raised here? That's a good question. And by the way, we just have about five more minutes. Um, I think okay, we're going to have a follow-up. Uh, we're going to have a follow-up because there's we're so gonna much. Get, we're going to do a deeper dive on these. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I want to give you a, a couple more. Uh, it, there's here's one for for um, for customized quick customized co customized content. Copy AI. If, if you don't heard uh, there, the guy who actually uh, was at Clary uh, is now uh, I believe the CMO at uh, Copy AI, um, and um, great product. Lately, I'm hearing a lot about lately. <laughs> um, not just listening to Stevie Wonder. But um, the, it, it, that that's a really good one. And um, 
Jasper, which is formerly Jarvis. <laughs> um, if you have a writer's block, you're looking for content uh, suggestions, that one's really good. Um, Crown, uh, this is, again, just a really good one. Uh, so crown.co, all these have trials though, by the way, get in where you fit in. If you're trying to do quick customized content, uh, do that. If you're trying to do SEO, then that, I want to talk about sales enablement before we go. <laughs> I just want to last uh, around sales enablement. Uh, if you really want to know, and, and it was said here today, right? What are the salespeople doing to get meetings? Well, most of those calls are recorded. <laughs> if if you have a gong and a, 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 a you know, or a chorus or a mind tickle, but all of these have now conversation intelligence. And to me, conversation intelligence is, will change the game for sales and marketing alignment uh, in ABM because now we can actually hear what the customer said in a cloud of words related to whatever it is uh, we are looking for, for lead qualification, forecast quality, all these other things. In fact, Gong now has uh, something called Ask Me Anything built into it about a deal where you can say, what is the problem with this deal? <laughs> Gong will go and look at all the calls, all the emails, everything, what's missing, and it will tell you uh, what's going on with that deal. Um, the intelligence is there, uh, and, and there are so many things that we can do with it. Uh, but uh, the last thing I want to say about this, uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll wrap up for now, but is that alignment still suggests silos, and I'm trying to get rid of that word because I don't think that we'll ever get where we're trying to get to um, without actually being intertwined. Um, Again, I don't believe that we should be selling to our target accounts. I believe that we should be facilitating buying processes for them. And if we are facilitating buying processes for our target accounts, then we can provide, we should be able to, and I promise you every single company that's out there can, mm -hmm. um, they have their own large language model sitting in their CRM and they just don't know it. Um, that can tell them a lot of things uh, and within their calls and within their emails, they have a lot of data that can tell them a lot of things, but we have to enable them. And so uh, because of how buyers are buying, we don't just need marketing sales intertwinement. Mm -hmm. We need to be compelevant. And that would be a combination of both compelling and relevant uh, to what this buying team uh, that is diverse, that is self-educating, we need to be uh, tied in to what they actually care about and agree with and we have the ability, because it's a digital world, to almost, not real time, but really close, be on the pulse of what they actually care about and trigger engagement that leads to our solutions as opposed to leading with our solutions so that we win their trust. Because it's really hard right now <laughs> to win trust. Okay. Um, we have video, which we'll talk about next time. I want to speed forward to just a couple of things. Thank you for your patience and allowing me uh, to be here with you today. I am really honored to be honest with you uh, about that. Um, if you are interested in assessing your ABM maturity or uh, or you have a client, you just want to assess their uh, ABM maturity. Um, I have a friend who has an, put together an amazing progression model, free of charge, no strings attached. Uh, she can provide you with um, a really great um, survey and an output uh, for you to use. Oh, I'm sorry, I went away from that screen. I'll come back to it. Um, mm -hmm. Survey and, and a, a way for you to use that survey uh, to help determine where you are. <laughs> and it'll actually tell you the kind of programs uh, that you can that you can run from where you are right now with ABM. Uh, so I would encourage you to to do that um, and tell a friend. Um, I have, uh, I'm really passionate about this. I didn't get into some of the ideas that I have about it, but I I'll just say this. What's happening with sales and the cost of sales and the gap between what we're spending and what we're getting mm -hmm. is not, <laughs> it's not closing. Uh, it's 31%, only 31% of reps make their quotas last year. Uh, it is not a marketing problem. ABM is a piece. It's not incorrect but it is incomplete without a sales function that is, because all that's happening is we're treating it like a lead funnel. And this is my whole point. If you are, okay, I get this lead, got this personalized experience, account-based experience, 
And my salespeople are selling to that lead the same way that they would sell to a lead that came through my regular lead funnel is a travesty. <laughs> it is, it is, it is a mess. And it's why only 31%. Because if ABM is working like it's working and we're getting it's a travesty. We have to change how sales and marketing align. And I have an idea of how, and I'm writing a book about it. So stay tuned <laughs> um, because uh, follow here. Uh, I, I will share with you uh, and you can check it out if you want. I'm writing a book about it though. Uh, it, it is called Choose Your Own Adventure. <laughs> it is a playbook for facilitating B2B account-based buying processes. Um, it is designed to make sales what it should be in a digital world, <laughs> which is uh, repeatable and scalable and predictable and profitable. <laughs> and it should work for everyone when sales and marketing and engagement uh, or enablement are aligned. <laughs> uh, we can be compelling. We can be compelling and relevant to our target audiences. I'm also writing a book called The ABCs of Sales. I won't spend too much time talking about it. I'm very passionate about it. Uh, this falls, follows the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, <laughs> um, always be. Um, and stay tuned for that one. It is 52 letter. That's why it's four volumes because it's 52 words that begin with the letter C that you should always be for sales and marketing. Uh, you know, compelevant being one of them, right? Curious. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, please follow, please like, please share. <laughs> and I'll let you know the release date. I think the release date for ABCs is going to be, um, uh, May 1st and, um, the, um, Choose Your Own Adventure book is uh, June June 30th, right around my birthday. Uh, so, but I want to come back and I hope you guys uh, want me back. <laughs> want me back. <laughs> um, and I'd love to to hear from you uh, just uh, on how I did today. I know we, we went through a lot. I have a lot more cool tools, AI tools, 30 or so. We didn't get to many of them today, but I would love to... Um, come back and, and, and share with you. And I'm also always interested, no charge, talking to your salespeople and just like, I'll come and I'll talk to them. I'll give them a sales meeting. <laughs> like if you have a, I, I'll just, you know, charge them up. I love talking to salespeople. <laughs> um, so, you know, you got a weekly meeting, just wants somebody to come in and uh, charge them up. Let me know. I got you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, Vote, please let me know how I did today. Um, I, I want to hopefully impact uh, what you're doing and we can get into more of this later. Bob, thank you so, so much. Good job, Sean. This is a good teaser. Um, we're gonna, we'll are gonna, we be back. It, it, we, we didn't hit uh, most of the, the tools, but there's a lot of tools that Sean uh, has up his sleeve and uh, we'll, we'll have it again uh, soon. I'm just gonna cut, the, cut off the um, recording now. It, great job, Sean. And then if anybody right. wants to stay on uh, to have an informal chat, we can, but I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you again and look forward to our next one. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care now.